Yep, it was. No, it is. Okay, hopefully this works and we add it on to where we uh, started. This is Austin's head after a uh, little bit of port work and uh, polishing the combustion chamber a bit. As you notice, uh, all the valve pockets, we've relieved those. And uh, the intake side, same as I always preach, not too much taken off. Good grain, proper grain texture. Don't want the fuel falling out of the air. Um, I won't carry on and on. You can see all the details in the 450, in the on the uh, YFC 450 head on what we're shooting for. Just a couple things I wanted to point out on this one. As you noticed from the previous shot, they, these were huge pockets. You can still see just the remnants of them. We don't want to take too much out of the combustion chamber area, but we've definitely relieved and unshrouded the whole circumference around the valve and uh, this this little step here is minimal uh, due to the shape of the combustion chamber it's not going to be felt if you hog that out you would be dealing with uh, this wall behind it anyway so nice smooth blend nice radiuses good divider between between your uh, valves to help promote the swirl and the shape of the overall uh, valve pocket itself in the general casting. Um, same story back in here. We're just taking out all the undercuts, not taking off too much material. Intakes retaining the same grain pattern. And as you notice, we walked a little bit more off these valve guides than we did the 450. There was quite a transitional step between the valve guide and the casting behind. And uh, we have, we have um, knocked those all the way down to reduce the restrictions. This one called for it, um, where the YFC was a little bit different situation. Um, you got to be careful what you take off the valve guide so it doesn't break in the future and start to chip away. It's okay to bring them up sharp, but you have to have a heavy taper on them so they quickly gain their material back so they don't just crumble um, under normal use. They will do that and that's another problem I see with a lot of port jobs that come through that I've uh, witnessed um, is they've taken too much material off the valve guides and then they just begin to disintegrate from this side up into the head and so you have to be careful what you take off you can definitely get them sharpened up get them laid back blend up your castings but uh, you don't want to take a huge amount off you can see it down in the intake pocket there's the bit of land that's still there. Um, we left it for the obvious reasons that the intake charge is coming in and that land is just fine. As a matter of fact, the swirl that's gonna develop at the valve guide is gonna help promote the intake charge overcoming the obstacle of passing the valve guide itself. So, um, whereas the exhaust side, we have blended that land right up to the valve guide itself. A um, couple little tricks there. A lot of people don't even think about that stuff. It all plays its role. Um, once again, the proper grain texture and the proper grain flow for the intake side, exhaust side. That's sufficient polishing. Uh, we definitely could spend the time and make it like a mirror, but that's totally sufficient. Not too much meat gone. No, uh, no change shapes. No hogging it out nothing to slow it down and cause an invisible restriction because of uh, velocities being lost. So just a good quality uh, blueprint port job here and the combustion chamber is nice and polished up for him. Um, gonna keep the carbon from building up, gonna help promote the uh, exhaust finding its way out of this and the fuel it finding its way in. So you should notice a substantial improvement in the way the bike runs through all the RPM range throttle response will improve, still be easy to start, it's not going to foul, it's not going to flood, it's not going to have mid-range hesitations, and uh, it's a very good complement to these 450s, and it's, uh, I think, in my opinion, I would start here before buying an aftermarket exhaust, because it totally complements it, you'll get more for your money out of a pipe if you start here. Um, and and with aftermarket cams it's pointless to put an aftermarket cam on a stock casting you're gonna have all your blemishes and uh, 
90% of what's engineered into the camshaft is going to go out the window and you're not going to get your money's worth out of your cam. So with all that said, we'd love to help you out. We do this all the time. Give us a call, 801-686-4556. This is Nate with Cam Power Sports and thanks for watching.